Hi friends! Welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I am participating in the What Would You Make challenge that is hosted by Zena at OK at Home. I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But if you are new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and I am so happy to have you join us today. And if you're returning, welcome back. I appreciate you guys so very much and happy you are here as well. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here is DIY number one. So for this DIY, I used this wood house I got from Dollar Tree and some window clings from Dollar Tree and some twine that I got from Walmart. So I start off by using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew and I just gave that house a good coat of paint front and back um, and on the sides as well. And I, after this, once it is dry, I am going to um, use some Mod Podge just in the matte finish, and I'm brushing this all on uh, the front part of that house. And that is to um, basically use it as a glue for those uh, clings. Now, I know at the beginning I had... Uh, pointed at the pumpkin I had changed my mind and decided I wanted to use these words so I cut the words um, I separated them so that way you didn't have as much as the as much of the window cling that plastic part showing to kind of um, get rid of some of that so then I just laid each word down and I'm just um, rubbing it into the Mod Podge there and then I take um, the Mod Podge again and I'm just going to coat the top of that with that Mod Podge just to give it that extra protection and make sure that it stays adhered to that wood house. And this is a very simple DIY for you guys. If you can find those houses, um, they are pretty new. I know they've had houses in the past. These were pretty new. Then I took some of the wood beads that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now you can use any wood beads that you want. And I'm just using my Waverly um, chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I am just brushing it all on to those beads. And then as those were drying, I took some twine that I got from Dollar Tree. And I am just using it to... Um, wrap around the bottom I think I wrapped it around three times and then I'm just tying a knot at the at the very bottom there and I know I showed you that rope that I um at the beginning I think I ended up not using it. I think I just end up using this twine from Dollar Tree it was a little thinner and easier to use and so then um, I decided that I wanted to brush on some of that cashew onto that pumpkin. So I'm just using um, that little stencil brush that was falling apart. So I just took the top part off and just used it to brush on um, the cashew paint. And then once it was dry, I took a ta tapestry needle as well as some of that twine from Dollar Tree. And I am just using it to... Um, get those beads onto my twine and for those of you who don't know me very well I am a knitter and a crocheter as well so that's why I had one of those tapestry needles in my stash so at the end I just tied a knot there and then I'm just looking at where I want to place it and then I just hot glue um, the ends of the that little strand to the back of the house and then I tie a knot on um, the end piece here, just so that it gives the hot glue a little more part of that twine to hold on to, I guess is the best way to say that. And then once I have this hot glued on, I'm going to trim off the, um, the longer pieces of that twine in the back. And this is complete. It's super easy and just simple little um, DIY to have. Oh, I forgot. I did put a little uh, twine bow on the top as well. And there it is. Oh, and I'm sorry. I forgot. I also dry brushed some um, of the antique wax around the edge as well. So let me know what you think of that. 
So today's collaboration is called What Would You Make? And it is hosted every month by Zaina at OK at Home DIY and Marsha with Marsha's Mush and Stuff. And this month's co-host is the amazing CJ. If you don't know who any of these women are, they are very sweet and very creative. Make sure you check out all of their channels. I will have the links to their channels in my description box as well as the link to the playlist. Check out and see what everybody has created with wood this month. Okay, so next DIY number two. This is a scarecrow. I think he came out so stinking cute. So I used some of these one gallon stir sticks and part of a five gallon stir stick, a sunflower from Dollar Tree, and then a saying that I typed up on um, Cricut Design Space. Now I'm taking these, I think that's what, seven of those, seven or eight of these sticks, and I am just lining them up just like I want them. And then I am taking some wood pieces that I had in my stash from previous projects, and I am just gonna hot glue them on to the back of uh, the sign there, just like you see. Now those uh, stir sticks do have numbers on them, so I made sure that I was gluing these on to the side that had the numbers so that they don't show. But then again, I'm gonna be painting over it anyway, so I guess it probably really didn't matter. So once I have all of these glue sticks, or I'm sorry, uh, painter sticks glued on, and now if you don't have painter sticks, you could um, use jumbo craft sticks as well. I take my part of a five gallon stir stick and I am just going to hot glue it onto the front and that is now going to be the brim of the hat and I just hot glue it on at an angle. Then I take my Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster and I give that bottom part of the scarecrow a good painting with that plaster chalk paint. And then once I was done with that, I'm going to take um, my burnt umber in apple barrel and I paint the rim and the top part of the hat with that as well. And then once that was done, I took my antique Waverly wax and a baby wipe and I am just smearing it onto the face part of my scarecrow. And then I'm gonna take a clean part of the baby wipe and just kind of wipe it all in, wipe off any excess and then wipe the rest in, smear it in. And then I take my uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew and a little chip brush that I got off of Plaid Online. And I am just gonna do some dry brushing all around the rim of that hat as well as the edge of the hat and the inside part of the hat and the brim just to kind of give it that worn look because you know scarecrows they're not very clean or tidy they're usually dirty and worn so <laughs> we got to make it look a little worn so that's what I'm doing right here and then after that was dry I took this saying that I printed off of my um Cricut. It says happy fall y'all and I'll tell you it was given it was a little hard to weed because there was a lot of lines in it. It took me probably an hour to weed it all out correctly and then as I go to lay it my H did not want to stick to that transfer tape so I don't know if you can see but it's stuck on my finger there so I figured I could just lay it out with my finger once I was done so I just went ahead and um, laid it out so that I could get all the rest of the word onto the brim of the hat and I, after that, I just took it off of my finger and stuck it in place and then made sure all the little lines uh, that were missing were added right back in. And I think it came out so cute. I love the way these letters work, look. Even though they were a lot of work, I just think they came out looking a lot really fun and really cute. So then off screen, I did with a pencil trace out a face. Now I am not a drawer at all. My dad will, can, will tell you that he can never figure out how I win Pictionary because I can't draw and he's a real good artist and he can draw so he takes a lot longer to make his picture perfect. Me, I just scribble something <laughs> which makes it faster. But I was proud of myself for actually making this face because I'm not a drawer, like I said. So for me, even though you might think this is something simple, 
it's a huge feat for me. <laughs> so then I just took my Arteza um, paint marker and I outlined um, what I had drawn. And then I'm going to take some white, my white marker, and I'm going to color in the tip of that nose white, and then the middle will be orange, and then the bottom will be yellow to make it look like a candy corn nose. And then after that, I will take that black marker again, and I will make some stitch lines because I forgot to do that when I had my black marker out. <laughs> So if you guys uh, don't know, you can follow me on um, Facebook and Instagram at Rustic and Lace DIY. So there you'll see, I'm just going to paint in the rest of that candy corn nose. And I will have a link to those markers in my description box below if you'd like to check them out. They work great. Then I took this sunflower that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just added some hot glue and I am gluing it right there on the top part of the hat. And I guess I didn't do the stitch lines yet, but you'll see me do that here in a few minutes. I realized later that I'd forgotten it. Um, then I took this leaf. It also came from a um, bush of leaves that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to hot glue that as well onto the hat just right behind the sunflower there. I was really nervous, you guys, at making this all because I didn't think I would be able to draw a very good face. And I am just really pleased at how it came out. I think it looks pretty fun. And then I took some burlap here and I just that I've got I think I got this burlap at Walmart and I just cut out a couple little squares. No, I'm sorry. I got this one at um, the Dollar Tree. It was like the burlap ribbon. And I actually pulled out some of the ends and I uh, hot glued it to the top. And then here you see me making those little stitch marks. Um, on the nose and on the mouth. And I don't know if you can see on the right hand corner, there's a little pad of paper there with my drawing that I had drawn out previously as I was practicing to do that. <laughs> and then I took another square and there you can see I'm just taking out one of the little strings on each end and that just gives it that more worn look. And then I just hot glue that on there too. Then I took some raffia and I cut it all down and I put a little hot glue, some strips of hot glue right under the rim of that hat. And then I am just sticking those um, pieces of raffia down onto that hot glue just to making sure that it sticks. And then I gave it a little trim and I had used those little end pieces for his bangs. I, I figured that um, they were the perfect size so that would work great for his bangs. And then I just did that all around the top part of his face right underneath that brim. Then I took some jute twine and I made um, knots on the end and I'm just going to use this for a little hanger. And I'm just hot gluing each end to the back and then I will use um, some little bits of ribbon that I had left over from another project and I'm going to glue them over each one of those knots and that is it for this DIY. You'll have to let me know what you think about it. I think it came out looking just so cute and I am so proud of myself for trying to draw and for it coming out good. <laughs> and there it is. It's so cute. You'll have to let me know what you think about it in the comment box below. Okay, so I just want to give everyone just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. I just recently hit 3,000 subscribers and I couldn't have done it without you guys. And I am just so grateful and blessed that you guys are hanging out with me and you like my channel. So I decided to do another calendar giveaway. So the rules are number one, you have to be living in the United States. Number two, you have to be a subscriber. Three, like and comment on this video. And you have to do that by 12 o'clock central time in the afternoon on 923 of 2001. And then I will contact the winner um, by giving a second reply to your comment and then I will announce it on my community page and then you will have 48 hours to respond with your address or I will pick another winner. So con um, good luck everybody and thank you so much. 
So here is the DIY number three. So I started off with this um, with a couple of stir sticks, the one gallon paint stir sticks. These wood pieces that I got from the Dollar Tree, they just recently came out with some wood pieces. And then these are some 10 inch wood pieces from the Dollar Tree and uh, two 12 inch pieces from the Dollar Tree as well. A wood stick there that I bought off of Amazon. Yes, I know I bought sticks off of Amazon. I still can't believe I bought sticks off of Amazon. Anyways, <laughs> I started off with using my sanding paper to give those wood pieces a good sanding. They're really soft in some areas and you know, um, they had a lot of slivers kind of coming out. So I wanted to make sure and give it a good sanding and sand away some of those slivers. And once that was done, I laid out the 12 and 10 inch pieces like you see there to make a square. And as soon as I get them right where I want them, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add some wood glue on each end as well as some hot glue of course for the immediate hold and for the long-term hold and after that i will attach that to the bottom of those square pieces and then i did the same thing on the top then i took this staple gun that i got from amazon and i'll have that in my description box as well and i am just going around and I am just adding some more security by using the staples to staple them in place. Then I turned it around and I took those wood strips and I lined them up where I wanted them, marked them with a pencil, and now I'm doing the same thing as I did with the other strips, is I'm using wood glue and hot glue to um, put them all in place. And then once I have all of those attached, I will, um, get that staple gun out and it also does brad nails too which i thought was really cool so i'm just putting two little brad nail pins in each on each side of each strip just like you see there that way i just have that extra security um, that it's going to stay then <laughs> i did this so here i'm gluing those two wood um, painter sticks to one on each side on the top there. Well, the problem was, is I wasn't really paying attention to where I was putting them. So in a minute here, I will show you how, um, first I painted them all with my pumpkin color, Waverly chalk paint. So I glued them on after I had measured the size that I needed the letters. So as I'm putting this on, I realize my my words are too long, just a little bit too long. So I was like, oh man, I can't believe I did that. I did it before I glued them on. I should have measured the, how big I could make these words after I glued them on, but it is what it is. I got it to work. So after figuring out how to get this to work, I was able to peel off some of that, some of the G. Now this is my last name. Um, and I was able to move it over and then I have the R I couldn't move, but just a little bit of it is sticking on to the top strip of wood there, which it looks fine. Um, so I was, okay, I got that one done. Whew, I can breathe a sigh of relief. So I <laughs> thought I was done for the day, but or at least, at least with, um, errors, but no, so here's the next error. So I'm all proud of myself. I'm laying this word down thinking, okay, I can do the A through the H, get it on there and then move the P over closer so it will match. And then right here, about here, I realize you see me kind of pause. Um, I'm not supposed to be putting the word patch there. I'm supposed to be putting the word pumpkin there. <laughs> so um, fortunately, I was able to peel each one of those letters off and transfer it to the bottom rung there and then get the pumpkin in the middle. Oh my gosh, you guys, I couldn't believe it. I was so, after that, I had to go get coffee. As you see, I have coffee there. I had to go get some coffee because I was just dying. <laughs> so then I took this little pumpkin, um, I don't know what it's a flower holder or candle holder or something that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just taking it apart. So I'm using my little spatula, but I also ended up using my heat gun 
um, to just kind of melt some of that glue, which helped make it a little bit easier to take it apart. And then once I got it apart, I realized the top part of that pumpkin was kind of coming off. So I'm just using my wood glue here and I'm just kind of putting it in. Sorry, my head got in the way. I'm putting it into where the cracks are. And then I'm just using some clips I got from Dollar Tree to clip it in place. And then I let it sit there for about a half an hour while that glue set. Um, that way it was on there nice and tight and I didn't have to worry about it trying to rip off. So after I got done with all that, I realized it was not wanting to stand up. I thought for sure it would stand straight. So I grabbed another one of those 12 inch pieces and I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And now I'm doing the same thing as I did with all the other pieces. I'm using my wood glue and hot glue and I'm just gonna attach that piece that at the top there to that edge just so that it would balance better and it stuck and it was standing and it was doing great so then I took this little wood piece and I'm making that as a stem so this is you're kind of supposed to represent a pumpkin although I didn't feel like it really looked like a pumpkin so I decided to take those little pumpkins and you know paint them uh, some of them I painted some of them I added scrapbook paper that Leopard print right there is actually vinyl for my Cricut that I just traced out and attached to it. And then once I had, I had six of them done, I'm going to um, hot glue them to the front part of the big pumpkin. And uh, it was standing fine, but then once I added these, I think I didn't, that one, that piece right there, I think was below the edge a little bit so it wouldn't stand up by itself after that so you'll see what I did here in just a little bit but here I'm just gonna hot glue that on and I was making sure that it wasn't gonna cover up the P that it that you could still read it and then I do the other pumpkins on the other side as well and as you can see I did add some bows um, some little embellishments to those pumpkins um, after looking at this I told my husband I might try and paint a few more pumpkins and add them um, so that there's an, the same amount of pumpkins on there as all of our grandkids. So I do need to add about, uh, I don't know, three or four more. I, I have to stop. And, I have to name all my grandkids and count them to know how many I have. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so then I took this piece that came off of those pumpkins that I tore apart and I decided, oh, it fits perfectly back here as a stand. So I'm just going to hot glue that onto the back of that pumpkin piece and it works perfectly um, as a stand for it. So if you try to recreate this, I would just say if you're going to put little pumpkins on the front, just make sure that you move them up some so that way they um, don't hinder your square pumpkin from standing. So there it is. And I just used some antique wax and did some dry brushing over it. And like I said, added some bows and stuff, some embellishments to those little pumpkins. And I think it came out really cute. You have to let me know what you think about it. And... Um, if you'd like to recreate it yourself. If you're new here, if you're new from the playlist, welcome. I hope you, if you like what you see today, you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and guys, remember to give me that like and make sure to comment so that you'll be entered into that giveaway. And make sure you go and check out um, Zaina, CJ's, and Marsha's uh, channels as well as the playlist. And with all that being said, you guys, enjoy your day. Have a blessed week. And I will see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>